all right uh, welcome back to another second video in this video series for uh, revising the programming in BlueJ so most of you uh, would have actually seen the first video I don't know if you actually seen it or not but in case if you haven't watched it please do watch it before we actually get started with any kind of programming in Java the input is very important you have to input some data into the program for the program to actually process the data depending upon whatever is the kind of program you want to write so basically there are like uh, two important ways where you can actually pass on the data from the user during the runtime or during the execution time of the program one is using the command line which I have explained in the previous video now we are actually going to do the same thing using scanner classes we are not going to pass any arguments from the command line but use scanner classes something called as scanner classes most of you must have actually studied scanner classes by this time but anyway in this video I am not going to go into the depths of scanner class I am not going to explain all the possible things what you can do using scanner classes but just explain in a very simple way how do you allow a user to enter something during the runtime without using command line fine let's write a class let's get started so I have to create my class my name of my class is pretty big it's, it's user input using scanner now I this is my main class now public static void main mind you I don't have to actually write anything inside these brackets because I'm not going to use command line arguments so I can leave the brackets in the public static void main this part I can leave it pretty much empty because I'm not going to pass any command line arguments over there and even before getting started with the command line I mean with the scanner classes we have to import we have to actually import the scanner class package that is we have to add a statement here import java dot util dot scanner and we are also going to import java dot io dot star just in case if you need it in the future now suppose say I'm writing a small program to input uh, two different numbers from the command line say I create two local variables of type int over here and a third variable called sum to actually store the sum of two numbers which the user is going to input now what I have to do is I have to follow the syntax scanner say IP is equal to new scanner system dot in now what does scanner IP is equal to new scanner of system dot in do this IP is an object what I'm actually trying to create IP is a name which I gave which basically I read it as input input object I can actually name it as anything I can name it as say object a I can because I've already used a here I'm not using a over here I already used a and b here a b and some I cannot use a b and some over here but I can use anything I can use z I can use x I can see I can actually use it as my obj anything but for simplicity I'm just using IP only this thing can be of your choice but the remaining syntax scanner new scanner system dot in is kind of like fixed this statement the scanner the object name followed by new scanner system dot in the bracket is going to create a scanner object now how are we actually going to use the scanner object so when you run the program we have to make sure that the program actually prints something meaningful which is meaningful and which is easy to comprehend by the user so the user can ex users can actually input some data okay so now we want the program to prompt the user what it has to prompt it has to prompt the user to enter a number so system dot out dot println it has to ask the user to enter a number and mind you please make sure you actually enter an integer so let's make it as enter an integer okay now when a user actually inputs an integer after reading this output statement on the terminal window while executing the program now the user will have to write I mean we have to write a statement here in the program to accept that input what do we do for that we say a is equal to IP what is this IP the object the scanner object what I've created IP dot next int next int off that's it now 
I want the user to actually input another integer. So what do I do? I just copy the same thing here and I paste it here. And another integer. I'm actually storing it in B. So this is what we're pretty much going to do. And say we do sum is equal to A plus B. Sum is equal to A plus B. And just print the sum. Print ln sum. Sum is equal to sum. And mind you, you can do a hell lot of things with scanner classes. I'm not actually going into the details of what all you can do with scanner classes. There are like at least some 10 to 15 programs in your school textbooks, which is like asking you to practice what you can do with scanner classes. But this is just like how do you enable a user to in enter input and do the processing of the input data in your main program or in, a, in your functions, what do you write in the future? A simple program where we're just creating three local variables of type integers a and b where a and b are the variables which is going to store the input which is given by the user during the runtime from the terminal window not from the command line this program is not at all about anything about, about the command line it's about a user dialog user dialog is like when you run the program the program actually asks the user to input something the user actually inputs something to the program and then the program accepts the input, stores it, processes it, and then it, actually, then it actually shows the output. So this is actually kind of a dialogue. The program is talking to you, and you're actually entering something back to the program. And then the program actually is accepting an input, and then again, giving back the output after doing some kind of modifications on the data, what you have input into the program. So let's compile this. Let's compile this. File save, no syntax errors. Close it. Now let's run the main program. See, it's asking. The program is now actually asking the user to input an integer, enter an integer, and make sure you just you just enter one integer per line and press the enter key now. Enter the second integer, say 23, and press enter key. You see the sum actually is 35. The program ends here. So when you actually enter the integer, make sure you enter you just enter one integer in the line and press enter key. Let's clear it up. And let's uh, re-execute the program. I'm sorry. Close this. Let's call the main function once again. Enter an integer. I pass 100 and I pass 200. The sum is 300. So make sure you just press, you just enter one integer per line and press the enter key. Don't actually enter two or three integers in a line and, and then actually expect the program to work correctly. It won't work correctly. I'm not getting into the details of what will happen if you do this or if you do that. Because there's no time. This is a very short video. I have to keep this video uh, not more than like 20 minutes typically because this is intended for revision purposes not for a detailed explanation I don't want to make this video 45 minutes to one hour video and then you have to sit through the video almost for two days for watching the entire series no this is for quick revision all right now let's see how we can actually modify the same program where we can accept uh, a floating point numbers float this remains the same. This remains the same. So enter a decimal number. Right here, enter a decimal number. All right. Instead of next int, it has to be next float. And I think that's it. Compile this. No syntax errors, close, run it, I mean, close it, run it, enter a decimal number. I am entering 12.33. Enter another decimal number. I would say it's 0 0.33. I am supposed to get 12.66 as the answer. See, here it is. Let's rerun the program with another input. Enter a decimal number, say 1.23. Enter another decimal number. So it's 2.33. It's going to be 3.66 or 3.56. I'm sorry. I actually entered this backslash. So it's, it's my typo. I just hide it with the pause pointer. Yeah, see, I didn't enter that. Okay, now we see the output. We clear this up. We go back to the program and see how we can modify the program for a user to actually, you know, 
enter a string fine we have to <coughs> modify the program where the user actually enters a string oh, it's not string it's string fine so we don't use next string here obviously we just use next that's the difference for strings we just use next this is yet another simple program where we are actually trying to enter two strings and we're just trying to concatenate the two strings or just join the two strings and display the the result of the user as sum of two strings is going to be the joining of two strings but here i have to make this more meaningful enter a enter a string here enter another string all right compile it close it no syntax errors call the main function enter a string bangalore mind you just one argument of the correct type in one line press enter key and another string bangalore city see sum is equal to bangalore city now why is this backslash clear it close it okay there's no backslash in the program close it on the main program enter a string a enter a string b c d yeah sum is equal to a b c d just join two strings and it's just like printing the output very simple program make sure you enter only one input in one line followed by the enter key close it. what i meant to say is like i'll redo it again open the main enter a string say i enter p you know like pit 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 one string in one line followed by enter key and another string another line after the computer actually prompts the user to enter something see after it prompts i enter the second string pit followed by bull and then I press the enter key it's going to print as like pit bull you know like the famous single rapper the pit bull guy yeah the same guy fine that's it for now clear it close it and then what else do we do with this i think it's pretty much that's it let me see if you can if you can write a short program which is like more meaningful like say you write a program which allows a user to input two numbers and find out the sum that's how you've done it yeah i don't want to make this program very complicated or keep this video too lengthy so that's it suppose if you want the user to enter a third number or, or third input all you have to do is very simple just copy this and prompt the user to enter something enter a string but i have to make this as c i have to make it as c plus c that's it so as many number of times you want the program to actually prompt the user to enter something this is the way of doing it first the statement which which prompts the user to actually enter something and then followed by a statement the scanner class object followed by next if it is a string it's going to be next in if it is integer type you're expecting from the user it's going to be next float or next double depending upon whatever you're expecting the user to actually input since this program is strictly about the user entering string inputs so i'm just using this syntax ip.next and since the user actually is entering the third string as an input so it's going to be stored in the third variable so let me actually separate this by uh, a line spacing i think this is clear this is for the first user input second user input third user input this is where i'm processing the input joining them all by a simple plus operator and then displaying the output for you compile this aha uh -huh. expect it okay there's going to be a comma over here yes compile this okay and like absent mind i'm in a hurry to finish it you know like okay no syntax errors close it now call the main enter a string okay i would say bangalore city uh what do you say bangalore city is cool i see bangalore city cool as simple as that i hope it's clear i don't want to make this very complicated as i told you earlier probably down the series in the videos we will be having uh, a couple of videos or probably one or two videos of 30 to 40 minutes each where i'll be, where I'll be uh, explaining uh, more programs using scanner classes so this is just the beginning so see you again back in the next video uh, that's it for now 
let me pause the video okay yeah here it is goodbye